Thanks for tuning in to the Big Nose Podcast, a platform for me to nose into other people's business. On this podcast, I strive to share with you stories from a range of different people over various different topics. So before my nose starts twitching any further, let's get down to business. Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Big Nose Podcast. This week I am delighted to be joined by Tom Hickey, Head of Fundraising and Communications at the Matter Foundation. How are you doing, Tom? You well? Hey, Pierce. I'm I'm well. Thanks very much for inviting me along. Great to have you with us. Um, I came across the Matter Foundation about um, just over a year ago in terms of what it does. I know about the Banner Hospital and what it does, but in terms of the Matter Foundation, perhaps you could give us an overview in terms of what specifically the Matter Foundation does. Yeah, no problem, Rob. Uh, well, we are the the Matter Foundation. We are the funding body of uh, fundraising body, sorry, of the Matter Hospital. So we work to raise supplementary funding for for the hospital to help uh, fulfil projects that otherwise might not happen. You know, so uh, that can be from ranging from buying new equipment or helping to refurbish wards or other patient facilities uh, to help to fund some research and education. Uh, so also helping on some clinical trials and also where needed uh, to help establish new models of care, new programs where uh, specialist staff are, are required. So that's, that's what we're there to do is to try and help the hospital provide the best possible care that it can for the over 400,000 people who depend on the matter each and every year. 400,000, that's, that's a lot of people every year and a lot of families directly linked in with the foundation. Has the foundation been around as long as the hospital or is, is, it, is, it, is it a new thing? Well, it's uh, it, it, well relative to the hospital, it's a new thing. The yeah. hospital has been uh, been around for nearly 160 years at this stage. It's very much part of the fabric of of, of Irish society, not only Dublin but definitely. And it's uh, has played a, a part in a lot of our substantial historic events. Uh, That's true. Uh, particularly over the last uh, century or so. Uh, but the the Matter Foundation was established in 1985. So the way that we work is we are um, a, an independent body from the hospital. The reason that's that's the case is like all hospital foundations and uh, we, we are set up in that way to ensure that the funds that are raised go to uh, the, the projects that is needed so that it is very much supplementary funding it's not a case of just a- adding as additional funding for uh, for that that the, the hospital receives from the HSE um, which is substantial it's over over 300 million a year that the Manor Hospital receives from the HSE yeah. but when you consider there's all over 400,000 patients uh, visits it soon uh, distills down yeah. to not being when you, a huge amount when of, it, of when funds. it's divvied so, up it's, uh, it's not a huge amount of funds yeah, per and, head yeah. exactly and that's to uh, to keep the show on the road that's to cover things like lighting heating uh, medical consumables staffing uh, general maintenance of the of the facility uh, and then and there's a, a small amount left over for additional things such as uh, replacement of, of equipment and, uh, and new projects it's not much there for new projects then you know so the additional funding is usually needed from the HSC and hopefully from ourselves and our supporters as well our role really is to is to work not in uh, in no way are we are we set up to work against the HSC or anything like that our role is to re, to to work together with hospital management with HSC so if we can all be on the same page ourselves government hse hospital and supporters then we can achieve great things and make the hospital the best it can possibly be so that's that's really what we're about yeah I, and i suppose the difficulty there is there's a lot of people who you rightly would be in need of your support but i was wondering is there, is there a specific areas that you like to focus on in terms of you know what you're looking to do in terms of supplement the, the hospital service well the patient is at the core of everything that we do like the, the founding ethos of the the matter hospital was to provide the best in medical care for all those who need it, uh, irrespective of their means. And we're very much true to that to that mission as well. That we want to provide the best in medical care for for everyone, who, every sick person in Ireland who needs it and when they need it. So that's that's what we're looking to do. So we don't get hung up on specific areas, saying we'll only fund cancer projects or we'll only fund cardiology projects or we'll only fund uh, transplant projects. What we try to do is look at the patient journey and to be able to to uh, provide support for projects that are going to have a direct impact for patients. So it kind of it, it's not it's not pigeonholed or there's not a blinkers put on it in terms of where the focus can be. It's 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 more wider ranging than that. 
Yeah, exactly. So if you think of it like, a, like even if you say, for example, uh, a cancer patient, a cancer patient's journey and their pathway goes far beyond just the the, the unit that they're, they're housed, so to speak. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A, a, a cancer patient is going to, to be touching the outpatients department and different clinics within there. They're going to be touching radiology. They're going to be touching surgery, potentially, do you know? Yeah. Um, so there's, and so and, and the same with, with, with most disciplines, that, that they go beyond just the ward in where the those uh, those conditions are housed, so to speak. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The hospital itself, there's no it needs to be of a, of a standard that's that's replicated right across the hospital. There's no point in having gold standard uh, cancer unit and then your uh, your outpatient department is not to the same standard or your radiology department isn't to the same standard. It's about raising all, all boats and as you say, following the patient need. So that's why we, we work closely with the hospital management to achieve that. Now is a time when you know fundraising is, is very difficult and it, it's hard to kind of with the restrictions in place to do the traditional fundraising that you used to do but in terms of yourself and the team that you have there in the matter foundation how would you go about year on year coming up with ways or solutions to getting the funds into into the matter foundation i suppose fundraising is never easy at any stage but really fundraising is down to to, to the supporters and the donors they are they are the ones who make it possible our job really is to facilitate uh, bringing their kindness and compassion to to the bedside of the patients who then benefit from from their support. So we are really facilitators, uh, and what we need to do, what we do, is put in place mechanisms for for people to be able to support. So there's a number of different ways in which we do that. We engage with uh, with companies to for things like staff led fundraising, charity of the year partnerships, that type of thing. Um, we also engage with. Uh, some high net worth individuals who would be uh, able to donate at a what we call, what we term significant level. <laughs> I was thinking that word the, you might use, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, significant level is a really uh, is a really appropriate to whatever people can do, and um, it, it's not a matter of, of uh, one donation means more than the other. It's really they're all they're all uh, they're all valued. Uh, we also would work with things like uh, regular. We have appeals, which would be you know you know your direct mail, direct marketing kind of appeals. And then we have uh, our regular giving, so the monthly direct debit. And that is that is a really s- such an important area of fundraising because it allows you to plan. And the more regular giving that you have, the better. We also do obviously things like our, our 100 miles in a month challenge and our 10,000 steps uh, uh, in May challenge, uh, which are fantastic. But really you're trying to put to have a, um, a good functioning fundraising body should have multiple funding channels so you're not over reliant on just one area and that there's a you're, you're developing sustainable income for, for for the organization each year so you can fund the projects that are coming up within the hospital so that if something like covid strikes or you know it could be weather whatever yeah. that you're not you don't find yourself decimated that because you, you've only got one area uh, of fund of fund and in terms of the impact on COVID, have you seen in the last 10 or well, nearly a year on it now, at this stage, an impact on the revenues coming in in terms of how they come in compared to maybe in the last 12 months? Yeah, there's been some shift, all right. We were we were well placed because we've, uh, we have we had a lot of confidence in, in digital and these uh, virtual challenges. We were uh, really a, a flag bearer for, for these type of remote challenges where we first started doing 100 miles in a month in um 2018 when we uh, we started to test it then and we've scaled it up year on year so we've uh, invested a lot of time into into digital and uh, virtual fundraising so we were well placed to really to really capitalize on the changes that covid brought where a group of people couldn't come together but they could do things in, in isolation we, we kind of cotton onto that before before covid because uh, people are very uh, time starving now you know one thing yeah. people don't have is, is usually the amount of time and so with the the idea of being able to do things at a, a, a place and, and and time that suits them was something that we tapped into uh, a couple of years ago and we're able to de- develop that our regular giving has, has that's uh, solid in terms of the people who are already signed up and, and doing that for us it's difficult to go out and re- recruit new supporters in that way and some other things we've had the pull like uh, events like uh, a ball you yeah. know, we had the the bull, and um, so that that type of thing has been impacted negatively. But there's been some positives there as well. So the matter has been at the centre of of the fight against COVID, Big time, and yeah. uh, there's been, you know it's the home of the National Isolation Unit 
it's uh, the home of the National Heart and Lung Transplant Unit. So it is a special uh, one of the areas of the monitor specialty is uh, lung health. Yeah. So it has very much been a focus for a lot of the media attention as well. So coupled with our own strategy of being very visible on, on digital, we've been fortunate enough that a lot of support has come to the matter throughout the COVID period. And we've been able to facilitate then the support from, from both uh, individuals and companies to be able to, uh, to to support significant new projects in the hospital. From, yeah. I think that's something that I, that I was totally aware of. I think the the level of interaction, the, le- the level of content that you create on on a lot of your social media yeah. uh, places has been, you know, something that I've noticed over the last two years, definitely. And I think as uh, organizations like yourself and foundations like yourself move in with more and more, more technology, at the end of the day, everybody has a phone in their in their pocket, a smartphone, be it Android or, or Apple, whatever it is, and they have the facility to be able to make a donation through their phone because we all know that our phones are now basically an online bank and a payment system yeah. for, for for making purchases so this is something that's definitely adapting and i think as you said you were well placed um to get ahead of this in terms of the covid impact but definitely hopefully probably build on it so i suppose looking into the future yeah definitely what we we look to do with all of our our activities is to look at and apply learnings that uh, you take from from one area and can you apply them to to the other look we have to run our, our, our organization in a very professional manner you know so it's uh we we operate to the to highest standards you know we're complying with all charity regulations and and there's a, a lot of scrutiny on on organizations like ours and, and, and rightly so and um governance is a is a top priority for us but part of that then as well is is to be uh, to be effective you know and to to do that you've got to be looking at, at working smart as well um and you can't just be, be a one-trick pony so you've got to be forward thinking and also being able to to move and, and understand current lifestyles and current, the way that people uh, are, are, are engaging with, with multiple media platforms and also the way that they um, they're spending their time yeah it, it, it's it, it's so it's so prevalent now and it and it's, it's so easy but with the phone in the hand to be able to uh, to spend and and in terms of maybe giving to organizations like yourself so easy and so you know you can you can tap into that from from an organization point of view in terms of the organization the the impact that the work that you do the team do in terms of raising the funds in terms of a a tangible uh, impact on on the patients in the matter how does that manifest itself i suppose going down the line yeah it's it's, uh, one of the, the the real joys for us working in the foundation is to be able to see firsthand the difference that the support makes like i, I myself am a past patient of the matter i had uh, lung surgery in in the matter god it's 25 years ago now but it's uh yeah. it definitely it's it saved my life and changed my life in yeah. so many ways and uh so to see firsthand the difference that fundraising makes is is very rewarding and that's that manifests itself in a number of different areas for example over the the last 18 months we've we funded some amazing well our, really it's our, our, our supporters who funded and we've we've channeled the funds that way yeah. is a really fantastic projects it's like for example the uh, the introduction of a robotic surgical program in the matter the, the matter was really well placed with uh, with surgeons trained in robotics across six different disciplines Right. And uh, we was the only site in Europe of that of that kind where these are surgeons who had gained robotic training through uh, private and uh, overseas practice, but, and, but it wasn't available in in a public setting. So we worked with the hospital to to identify that need and then raise funds to introduce uh, robotic surgery to the matter. So what it is, it's, it's a robotic assisted surgery. So that the surgeon sits at a console controls a a robot which sits over the patient and it's all minimally invasive uh, surgery so little prick hole of a of a of a incision into 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 the the patient for things such as prostate cancer lung cancer a lot of gynae cancers as well so it's it's transformed cancer surgical care from things like a prostate which would have been a standard five to seven day inpatient uh, visit and then uh, can be complications in terms of lifestyle and all afterwards to two days in and out minimally invasive not much scarring very few complications in terms of functionality uh, and living a for post-life living a very uh, 
very full life for, for, the, for the patient, but also from the hospital's perspective then as well, it's a much more cost-effective way of, of carrying out surgeries. There's a saving of approximately 1.3 million a year for, for the hospital and consumables and things like that. And, and also it means that uh, the, beds, the bed space then becomes much more functional or you're seeing more, more people. So we, we were able to, to, to fund that. Also, throughout the COVID period, we've uh, you know to work very closely with the hospital. Where we were able to fund new equipment that was needed uh, throughout the period. We helped to uh, fund a, a new respiratory unit that's been developed in, in the hospital. Um, also, a new what's called um, acute medicine short stay unit, which works alongside uh, the A and E or the emergency department. Yeah. So the, the idea of that is it's a twenty six bed unit. So it means for it allows for a quick flow through. Uh, a and E, so people get brought to the to the AMSSU, and they they're able to be correctly diagnosed, and then uh, it's almost like a, a holding ground to, to it until they go to the, the appropriate ward that's yeah. needed or, or to be discharged. But it means a much qu- quicker flow through the the A and E, so it's reducing overcrowding there, to, and that's so important now um, in terms of of COVID. So you're reducing the the, the risk of infection spreading in in that area, you know. Yeah, and it's, so, it's 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 something that um like a lot of the organizations like yourself they like they do a lot of unseen work. Everybody knows what goes on in the hospital, but it's it's kind of like the aftercare or you know as you said it's all about the patient's journey and there's a lot of work that you do I know in, in terms of that as well. Yeah, what what we see is a lot of people who have been through the matter tend to want to come back and, and support, and that's the same with with most hospitals. The term of grateful patients, you know, it's a, but it's true, you yeah. know, you get, uh, patients and families who who want to just express their, their gratitude and thanks for the care that they they did receive. It's not only that uh, those who uh, who support, you know, people from the wider community want to support and make sure they have a great hospital in place, but we also. Um, we also do things like uh, outreach programs into the into the community. For example, on Leo Street, there is a, a service there for elderly within the community to, to come in and, and meet each other and have meals and just kind of becomes a real social hub for them. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's been fairly badly impacted through COVID. The, the centre hasn't been able to operate to the same capacity. Also, at, at the moment, it's been having to, uh, to just deliver meals uh, out to the homes rather than being able to bring them together. So we try to look uh, beyond the walls of, of just the, the campus of the hospital as well, because the matter very much is, is embedded in the community. Uh, it's not just the campus itself. There's a lot of other things going on around the, the area as well. Moving on to the end of this month, and in this day next week, um, I'll be donning my, my runners. I'll have to fish them out of the, the cupboard somewhere and dust them down and you know start doing my stretches maybe a couple of hours beforehand after getting home from work. But uh, one of the key events of the year in terms of raising funds you you have you have the 100,000 steps is it in May uh, we have 10,000 steps in May 10,000 steps, 10, steps a day in May so yeah. that's uh, your uh, what well, 310,000 steps yeah. in, in, in the month of May but the big one coming up now in February is 100 miles in a month so that is uh, the challenge is to run 100 miles in, in the month of February so 28 days to do it it's no mean feat particularly because the, the challenge is the idea of that challenge is as well is that every mile matters. It's not lo- like, for example, when you're doing doing a marathon, and uh, I've done a few myself, and yeah. I know this from personal experience, that people always just talk to you about 26.2 miles. But when you're running the marathon, you're actually running about between five to 600 miles. Most of those miles go unnoticed, and nobody cares about them, and uh, never wants to hear about them, and just wants to hear about, well, what time did you do? And That's all on, they want to know. On the, the day of the marathon, you know, and if that wasn't some four miles or not or four, four hours, then oh well, you, oh well, I thought you would have been quicker. <laughs> Do you know, yeah. so uh, the whole idea of one hundred miles in a month is that every single mile that you run matters. It's all part of your challenge, and you can do it at a time and a place that works for you. You can do it in a running plan that's going to work to your lifestyle as well. So if you're someone who can go out and do 10, 10 mile runs, th- that's fantastic. Or if you're somebody who needs to, to run at a much lower level than that, uh, on a, but on a more regular basis, that's fine too. It's not about time. It's about a community coming together 
uh, to actually take on the same challenge but do it in their in their way and say at a time that suits them and it's and it's as you said it's it's a sense of when we're all all kind of doing the runs by ourselves i think what the the matter foundation have done very well is create that sense of community or social hub in terms of their online presence where people can go online and and share their progress together it's it's very interactive and how how do you kind of manage that and how do you kind of drive that that was a key part of it, you know. I mean, to, while people are doing the runs individually, you still want to, uh, them to feel connected, that they're not out there on, on their own, you know. So um, to facilitate that, we work with a, we, we we set up a, a a Facebook group for the month of the challenge, or really the, 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 for two months. So it's leading up into when people are signing up and receiving their packs and all in the, in the month before. And then uh, throughout the month of the challenge, it's uh, it's sharing motivational stories, encouraging each other, and, and that's what it's all about. You know, it's uh, like you, when you're planning to do a run, and if you're not feeling up to it, and then somebody from you're living in Dublin, and somebody from Galway is getting sending you a message saying, uh, "Come on now, Pierce, can, I did my run this yeah. morning. You know, you get out there and do it. You know, you can." It encourages you, and. Um, but also then we like to share motivational stories in there about the difference that your your fundraising is making in the hospital and to the, the, the people that it's making a difference to so patients within within the hospital the, sharing the, some of the challenges that uh, that they've overcome you know people who've had life changing injuries like life changing spinal injuries and uh, completely have to alter their lifestyle or people who've uh, battled cancer and are coming through that or people who've had a heart or lung transplant and how they get through every day and it's uh, it encouraging and motivates you then to get out and, and do your run and post that onto your fundraising page which is the key to it so the more you post onto your fundraising page showing people uh, your own peers what you're doing and uh, encourages those donations to come in and then all that added up makes transformational changes absolutely and i think considering where we are in terms of you know the restrictions that are in place and are likely to be in place for the month of february and there's probably people out there who maybe thought at the start of January they were going to kind of do a new year, new me, and it hasn't worked out. Maybe now is an opportunity for them to look at February in, in a different light. And if it's a case that they, they want to get outdoors and they want to challenge themselves for the month, this is something that in terms of it's a bite-sized thing. It's I know it's 100 miles and it's over 28 days and it is a challenge. But if they wanted to start somewhere, this would be ideal for them. In terms of how they would get more information and where they can go to, if they wanted to, to sign up, how can they go about that? Yeah, um, if anyone looking for more information, they can, uh, they can get it through our, our, our Facebook page, the Matter Foundation, and also um, on our website, matterfoundation.ie. And what I would say is, even with the current restrictions, remembering that uh, five kilometres runs both ways, you know, so yeah, we can all find decent runs within that, within that radius that we can do on a, uh, on a couple of times a week or on a daily basis, whatever is going to work for each individual but uh, the beauty of this challenge is you can still do it within these COVID restrictions absolutely and will you be doing it yourself uh, I won't be doing it this time myself no uh, a couple of my colleagues are doing it and we have a team from the emergency department in the hospital a team of over 50 people frontline wow. healthcare workers who That's... are going to be doing this challenge so I think uh, we're hoping that a lot of people will get behind and support them as well because it just shows the, the dedication that not only are they they uh, on the front line against COVID and all other things that are coming into the emergency department, but they're all, they also make the time to uh, try and raise additional funds for the, the hospital as well, and just shows the level of dedication that they have for their patients. It's fantastic stuff. It's a fantastic story. I think that they're going to go and you know do 12, 13 hour shifts in, in there and then kind of get this in as well. And as you said, you know, there's a group of 50. If there was other organizations out there, who were thinking, oh, okay, our, our, our colleagues are working from home or they're, they're working, you know, remotely. It's a it's a great opportunity for them to kind of get that sense of, you know, camaraderie among colleagues as well. Yeah, very much so. We have uh, over 40 companies uh, wow. signed up with uh, roughly 600 participants uh, from, from corporate teams signed up. And it, it really is for companies looking for something to engage their staff. It really is a, a brilliant thing because um, it does connect um, the, the team and it can engage people at all levels of your of your organization and it also don't for as an as an employer you got when you're considering things like health and well-being a uh, physical challenge like this is perfect for that and also there is the, the mental health benefits for people getting exercise and it's not all about as i say this challenge is about the distance and it's about completing that distance over a month so it's not about being able to to break records in terms of speed or anything like that if you're somebody who wants to walk the challenge 
that's fine or if you're somebody who's just a slow jogger that's absolutely fine okay. or if you're somebody who's uh, four minute miles you know good luck to you. fair play, fair play. <laughs> but uh, yeah it's uh, it, it really is open for everyone and it's about camaraderie that's really the, the, the key to this whole thing Tom that's been really insightful I appreciate you coming on to the Big Nose podcast today to explain all that the Matter Foundation do I think everybody who's listened in has definitely got a better picture of what you do and, and the great work that you do in the foundation and I hope that you, we might pick up a few more joggers or walkers or four million mile, mile runners along the way from this podcast it's great to have you here thanks very much Pierce and just, uh, just to thank everybody who has uh, supported the Matter Foundation and continues to do it because like I said, we're, we're nothing without the, the people who support us they're the ones who to make all of the, the, the transformational changes in the hospital happen. Absolutely. Thanks very much.